In part one of our journey to the island of Ireland, we spent some time taking in the best in the Southwest, which included the beauty of Ballybunion, some history of Tralee. Jack Nicholas didn't reply, but Alan Palmer did. We were gobsmacked, really, that Alan Palmer would even reply. The friendships being forged in Waterville, and the Lady Harley Cup at La Hinch. <laughs> what an up and down! We included some off-course adventures like Gaelic football. Oh! oh that's a pull down! It's a pull down! I agree. A shortcut on a car fare. Hey. And we discovered Dingle. Hello! Where we learned about the legend and legacy of fungi. Now it's time for part two of my journey to Ireland, and in this episode, we're headed north. But before we do, we were offered a brief sunrise boat ride, not just to see and learn about the Cliffs of Moher, but to get in them. See the cliffs some more. Get down here to look up there. If you want to be humble, just come on out here and look yeah, at the cliffs some more. Yeah, everything. Stranger of it. Look how clear it is. From those mind-bending cliffs near La Hinch, it's three and a half hours north to Belmullet, where the golf offering and experience is based on all the game is meant to be. A raw and wild walk from one shot to the next, immersed in the minimalism of smart architecture, charmed by the loyal locals who warm your heart with their hospitality and separate themselves for the way they chill their Guinness. Carn is, is a very special piece of ground and, and great tribute should be paid to those who had the vision to actually believe that a golf course could be put there. The course was designed by the late Eddie Hackett and I recall Eddie Hackett saying to me, this is the last course that I will design and it's the one where we've interfered with nature to the least extent possible. Our host was Jerry Maguire, who fell in love with the golf and has since donated his time and experience and everything else he's got to making sure Karn gets the recognition it deserves. You know, when we were back last March with the COVID thing and we had just got all the merchandise into the shop, and there was nobody to buy it. You know, we had bills to pay and there was no money coming in. It's just, you know, I don't know what drives you on, but when Tom Coyne did the pandemic story, and the emails, the level of emails we got in, it nearly burst the, the computer. And it wasn't just about people giving you a few bob or a handout or buying something in the shop. It was people saying to you, keep Karen alive, because we want to get there someday. Those emails made more to me um, than the actual financial windfall. As any American who comes and meets a Jerry Maguire, it's like, I just feel like I have to ask you to show me the money, but show me Karn. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I mean, Karn is just an amazing place because I found it in, back in 1999. I just could not get over the golf course. I'd played many links courses in Ireland, but this was just a unique piece of land, a unique landscape with loads of potential. Oh, I love that move. No, that's a manufactured swing. I like not it. to lose balls. I need one of those. Is that kind of the story here? Is eventually you got here and now you've never left? 
if you can get people here, yes. they will see it, they will believe in it, and they will come back. That's it. I'm, I'm celebrating my 21st birthday of Cairn. There was no tourism in Belmullet and uh, very little industry. You know, this land was all common. It's owned by 15 farmers and they assumed they could build a golf course. They had the foresight and the vision to see that. And then they took Eddie Hackett on and Eddie Hackett came out here and said, go for it. And uh, on the, literally on the back of a newspaper, they designed the whole, the greens you'll see and that are all just on natural plateaus. There was no bulldozer were brought in and they took eight years to build. That's why it took eight years to build. Uh, that was eight years worth waiting on for what was produced at the end of the day. It's as raw as modern gets. Yeah, it's, it's raw and rugged, I suppose, for a number of reasons. Uh, we would have always felt we should be like the others, uh, but we didn't have the money because we're so remote out here and because we don't have the same level of visitor rounds. But more and more, as people came and played the golf course, the one unique thing about it was because it was raw, it was rugged. It was like golf 50 years ago. As we made changes to here, as we became more involved in social media, as indeed people start talking about us more, as the business increased, I think we're one of the big players now because of our uniqueness and the rawness. And I think we can stand our, our ground with anybody. It's destination golf. When you get here, you'll just be blown away by it. If people are willing to make this trip, they're in search of an adventure. Absolutely. And if you really want an adventure, it's right here. It is. It's a golf adventure that you get here. It's surrounded by dunes. Uh, you could be anywhere in the world. You see nobody. It really is golf on the moon. Karn was in fact lunar. And the idea of learning to weave was lunacy. But that's exactly what happened en route to Nairn and Port New. McGee's has been synonymous with the town of Donegal and hand-woven tweed since 1866. You'll see here now, so when Josie moves his pedals, you can see this gap changes here. Oh. And each time the shuttle is thrown across, you're changing your footing down below here. This is mind-boggling. Like, who said, oh, I got an idea? It's not documented in history, actually, on, on when the actual hand-weaving came around. And weaving today, as well, is, is taken from the same principle as this, um, on a much more complex uh, way, just to make up more complex patterns. And even on this More loop, complex than that. More complex. This is quite a simple weave, believe it or not. But I, I don't uh, <laughs> Would you like to have a go, Matt? Yeah, I would love to have yeah. a go. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Pull it across, push it back, move your foot. Josie, go ahead and take a break. I got us covered in here now. Don't worry about it. Everything's under control. Turns out, I'd have the last laugh. I wove myself a jacket that day. Made Josie proud, and one could argue, made weaving history. Fabulous. Looks great. As the Irish like to say, that was a true story. There would be no jacket required when we hit the beaches at Nairn and Port New, where it's all about non-pretentiousness, new ownership, an update to the design, an overachieving food truck, and comparisons to places as popular as Pebble Beach. Well, I wasn't really in the market for a golf course, and the opportunity came up. And, you know, how many times do you get a chance to own a piece of the world. I went up and visited and I fell in love with it. And we were fortunate enough to get Gil Hans to come over and look at it. And, and Gil said to us, this is really what a true Lynx golf course is, is where land meets sea. Larry Foley met Liam McDivitt over 20 years ago and together they have partnered on several business deals, but none quite like Nairn and Port New. What's been the feedback from the membership? Very good. <laughs> Very, they love it. <laughs> they have great food, they have a lot of fun, great condition golf course, and they're paying 650 a year for membership. 650 yeah, a yeah, year? Yeah. To play golf? Yeah. <laughs> 
It's laughable. Yeah. When people buy golf courses, I always like to start with why. You know, I grew up playing golf here. It's my favorite place to come in the world. This is just a special spot. I mean, it's just a unique golf course. That works. <laughs> just look around you. I mean, it's, it's spectacular. Could you have ever dreamed of owning this property? I never got this far in my dreams. Never had any, any desire to get involved in a golf course. I can't remember not playing golf here, so that, you know, probably three years of age I've been playing golf. I would spend more than noon and night out here. I would caddy here, I used to get a pound to caddy. I have a great friend, Laurie Foley, and the first time he showed up, he had the same reaction as you. He was just blown away. I had no idea. I mean, I've been coming to Ireland for 15 years. Yeah. I had no idea this existed. I mean, I've heard the name. I heard about you guys buying it. I heard about Gil Hans and Jim working on it. But when we rolled up, I was like, what is this? Yeah. And now to be here, standing on this tee, surrounded by what we're looking at right now, mind boggling. It is, it really is. And what is the master plan? What is the vision? Well, the vision is to introduce Donegal to the American and international market. I think when you talk about pinching yourself, it's nights like tonight. This is unbelievable. How good is that shot? Really good. You grew up caddying here and got a pound? A pound around. Pound around? Yeah. And now you're the owner of Nairn Port New. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I, gotta, I pinch myself every time I come here. The new and improved Nairn and Port New will be one of many aspects attracting more eyeballs and interest in the north. Places like Critch Island will be on the receiving end of that activity and positive energy. I mean, we have found the greatest value in golf, the greatest hidden gem in golf. We found it, exclamation point. There's nothing better, this is it. Number one, top of the list, hidden gems of golf in the world, Critch Island, right here. This is insane! The wind is blowing into my ear. Started building this course in 82. 1982, finished in 86, no machinery, shovels, baby. <laughs> wow. Right up the road. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. 
sir. Man, that's so much fun. Yeah, well done. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Like Nairn and Port New, it's what's happening at Rasa Pena, and specifically St. Patrick's, that will be the guiding light and a source of the growing interest in the portfolio of what's new in the North. Rasa Pena recently added a Tom Doak original. My host was Frank Casey, whose father and family have been managing and developing this lynx land for several decades. Ross Pena dates back to 1893. The original course opened an old Tomaris original design. There was a very grand hotel uh, built at the same time for visiting golfers that would come from mostly the UK. Our parents purchased the hotel and, and the old Tomaris links in, in 40 years ago, 1981. And we developed Sandy Hills, which opened in 2003. And then when we had the chance then to partner with Tom and, and build St. Patrick's, from 2012 onwards and we started work here in 2019 and eventually opened in June 21. You guys have done this a little differently in terms of you have the infrastructure, you have the two courses, but the, the real flagship offering, this land, you're back-ending it. Yeah, we really see this as being a real flagship, not just for, for you know, Rossapena, but for Golf in Ireland. You know, we believe what Tom has done here is just, you know, it's going to be world class. This area has a lot of really great golf, but this could be the one that actually brings the North American golfers, the avid amateurs, the big game hunters to an area that for years they've sort of potentially pass by. Of course, people have done done the, the trips to Ireland and they've done the southwest. They might have done it two or three times and then they've done the north coast, but you know, they haven't got to the northwest corner. The Gulf from Cairn, Tennis Grown and then the whole way along the coast, Marva, Critch, Narna Port Now, we're just blessed with great Lynx Golf, great sights. The scenery is just absolutely stunning. Tom Doak took what was going to be 36 holes by Jack Nicklaus and instead created his best 18 for the Casey family. We, the avid amateur, and the north and northwest of Ireland all benefit from the fruits of Doak's architecture and artistry. The canvas is the perfect situation for golf. It is. It's the sand dunes, the, the blowouts, you know, the deep cavernous bowls right beside greens, the, the mountains, the sea, it's stunning. We had just an epic day. I mean, to showcase this piece of land, to showcase what you guys have created, it's time to sort of pull back the curtain. What are you most excited about? Just being able to welcome people back. It's, you know, it's been a long couple of seasons with COVID obviously, and it's still pretty difficult to encourage people to come from the States. So really looking forward to, you know, hopefully better things in 2022 and, and onward. Look at that wave right there. So right there cool. on that shoulder. Yeah. Woo. All the way to the beach. To have, you know, to have three courses in the one location, you know, and to have a quality accommodation on site. It's, you know, you can come here and spend three, four, five days and, you know, plays, you know, three, four rounds, whatever. Most people play one round in each and then sort of play their favorite one again. Views of the ocean are just one of the benefits of participating in Lynx Golf. What's in the ocean and what ends up on the grill or what goes straight to the plate at a place like Harry's Shack, wedged between the water and the first fairway of Port Stewart, is a meal and an experience no one should skip or will forget. I've been coming here for a long time. I've played Port Stewart several times. I might have actually hit this shack with an errant tee shot from time to time, and th that can happen. I, I have a broken sign to prove it, actually. Was that you? <laughs> Guilty as charged. I mean, that, it's true. I mean, we, we, are, we are below the first fairway of Port Stewart. Yeah, I mean, it's perfect for golf. After golf and coming down here for a beer outside and some of this fresh fish, which all comes off local boats, not to mention families enjoying themselves on the beach. We get a real mixture here coming from all over the world, loving what we do, so we're very privileged. You're gonna have some of the best oysters in Ireland. 
These nice big langoustines, the biggest we've seen this season, they landed just yesterday morning into Greencastle, which is just over across from us. Stevie on the barbecue here. Um, he's grilling two nice brills on the bone. It's an embarrassment of riches. It's a feast. All right, guys, go time. Cheers, everyone. Welcome. Cheers. Well cheers, done, cheers, chef. cheers. 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 Royal Port Rush is not more than two miles from Port Stewart, which makes them one of the best two course options if you want to play 36 on the same day in Ireland. Host of the 2019 Open, which was won by Shane Lowry, it was the first time the major championship had been played on the island of Ireland since 1951. Port Rush played so well as a host venue, it will get it again in 2025. My playing partner would be Gary McNeil, the pro at Port Rush and has been for 22 years. So Gary, there was so much hype around Port Rush hosting an open back to Northern Ireland and it was a fairy tale. It was. Uh, we delivered. <laughs> it was remarkable and uh, yeah, I mean to end up with, with Shane Lowry winning it, you know, was, was just incredible as well. It was a remarkable week, great fun. After the cut is made on Fridays of majors, if there's an odd number in the field, usually a local pro or prominent member will fill in and play as what they call a marker. So as the cut is happening, are you sort of tracking it at this point, or what yeah, was it? Uh, yeah, I, um, I, I can remember Friday, I, I, I spent a little bit of time on the, on the practice range on Friday afternoon. It was looking very much like it was going to be on the odd number, and then I, I finally got the call from the uh, from the RNA to say, "Look, uh, you still happy to do this? Are you still prepared to do this?" I mean, that's like the dream come true. You're now playing <laughs> yeah. in a major championship. That's what? Right. What was that like? The nerves that it like? Have you ever felt anything like that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd played in I'd played in a couple of Irish Opens before in the past, and uh, nothing the scale of of an Open Championship. Uh, but um, you know, I, I, luckily I'd, I'd put in a fair bit of preparation. My game was in decent shape, so I wasn't overly anxious, you know, going off. Playing as marker, Gary McNeil. McNeil's caddy would be Paul the Rocket Roddick, who's a member at Port Rush and who's been carrying bags since he was 10 years old. He did ask me that the Open was coming in 2019. I might be playing as a marker. He says, I want you on the bag. I says, yep, no bother, that's fine. It was an unbelievable experience. One of my best experiences at Royal Port Rush, definitely in the last 54 years. Saturday, uh, on, on, on the Saturday morning, on the 17th, I managed to roll a big one in on the 17th green. 40 yards left of the pin. We had to come over quite a large hump. I said, look, Gary, it's going down, it's gone over. This is Gary McNeil, who is the club pro, the senior club pro here at Royal Port Rush. He's playing as a marker with Paul Waring in the first two ball. And what a lovely memory that will be. So who read the putt? Well, the, the truth is, um, I read it. I told Gary, I don't know if he was listening, he said he read it, but I went in and that's the main thing, I don't care. I, I did my job and I was pleased. I remember every shot, you know, it's just, it's such a special couple of days. You know, while you're out there doing it, then it's, it's lovely to, you know, sit back sometimes and just sort of relive it. I thought so much about what it would be like teeing off on the first hole. I'd, I'd forgotten what the 18th, I didn't even sort of register with me what 18 was going to be like. And I, I managed to hit a good drive and hit a, hit a lovely three iron up into the middle of the green. And, and all of a sudden realized I'm doing this walk that I've watched so many people do over the years from the grandstands myself and walking up there. And it was uh, quite a moment. Yeah, it was, it was, it was great. Oh. oh my God. What a shot! Do. <laughs> <That'll work. laughs> Here, I guess I'm supposed to give you your putter at this point. Yeah. Not every course we played was big and bold and hosts opens. A place like Castle Rock, and specifically the Musadin course, is often included in any itinerary in which you're playing Port Stewart and Port Rush. Unfortunately, we only had time for the ban. 
Castle Rock's sporty nine-hole par three course. Five guys, three holes, last man standing. You're the high score, you're out. Next. Castle Rock itself is quite a friendly place. I think they're just rough and ready and rugged Lynx golf courses. I mean, they are just traditional Lynx courses, they're tough. The greens looking out over the scape from the 17th tee, the square green, the punch bowl. I mean, this is, this is like the adventure that everybody's looking for, it seems to me. Here we go, last up, we already got a couple guys tight. We need to survive. Oh! <laughs> always come to Northern Ireland, especially from the States, to play nine hole golf courses. You have a lot of guys that play 18 holes on the mustard and, and then come out here as a group of six or eight with a couple of beers and play a scramble or alternate shot and, and really have a lot of fun out here. I'm out. Hopeful look. So the band course was built by our own members, uh, Harvey Pennick drew it on a, on a dinner mat uh, and the guys kind of then followed it forward from there and built it with old tractors, diggers, wheelbarrows, shovels. Oh, Telly. <laughs> As the curtain was coming down on this journey to the island of Ireland, we figured there'd be no better way to tie a bow on our travels than some stories and spirits at the Giant's Causeway. I like the fact that we're taking a little walk, Giant's Causeway, to drink a little whiskey. Oh, totally, yeah. Sure, that's, what, what else, else would you want? What else would you do on a Friday evening? What else would you want? This is made for us. Let's taste a little whiskey, let's hear a little story, and then see where it takes us. That sounds good. Yeah. So I'm gonna introduce you to our 12 year old. So this has been aged for 12 years in sherry barrels, and the sherry barrels we get from Oloroso Sherry in the south of Spain. Now a sherry aged whiskey is gonna be quite dark in color. It's gonna have flavors of apricot, almond. You're gonna get a fudge sweet finish on the whiskey. Now to get the best out of your whiskey, what you do first is you swirl it around. Now the first sip of any whiskey is going to shock your palate. So just let it go. So take a small sip, let it go. Get it out of the way. It's going to be the second sip that will give you the flavour of this particular whiskey. Letting it go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Julie knows what she's talking about. <laughs> Finmacool lives in the cave up there. He's 54 feet tall and he lives there with his wife and son. To this day? To this day. Yeah, we would see him occasionally. He looked around the bays and he could see the columns. He thought if I collected those together, I could make a path. So he started building over here and built the Giant's Causeway, the path to Scotland. And that's as sure as I'm standing here. <laughs> that's a true story. That is true. This is special, guys. Isn't it? It's beautiful. Though. I mean, oh, people, people come here and have a day like today that we're having now, tasting this whiskey, hearing these stories. That's what people come for. That's to, to get the experience. Upon further review, and as we take on this view one last time, a trip to the island of Ireland is about the crack. The culture. It's the kind of golf course you will not see every day of the week and camaraderie. It's the connection to the water. 
the land. Like the ball, dead. And the air you breathe as you roll in and along the dunes with new friends. It's the sunsets on the ruins, and it's the scale and the history of the trails that lead you to the edge of what's next in life. Don't walk, run to Ireland. And I bet you'll want to come back as fast as you can. <laughs>